third way to compute functions of a square matrix is using the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. The Cayley-Hamilton theorem. Cayley-Hamilton theorem says, look at the characteristic polynomial and substitute A for the value S. So this is what the characteristic polynomial looks like when you substitute A for the power S. Incidentally, A to the power 1, A to the power 0, is the identity matrix. What Cayley Hamilton theorem says is that a, f a function is a root of its own character, a matrix is a root of its own characteristic polynomial. That is, P evaluated A is equal to zero. So all of this is equal to zero. So you can then solve for A to the power N in terms of lower powers of A. So any power of a greater than n, then, can be expressed as a function of powers of a up to n minus 1. For example, if you went to a to the power n plus 1, you would get a times a to the power n, but a to the power n is all this stuff, and so you would have a times all of this. When you multiply a through here, you're going to get a to the power n here, but a to the power n is all this stuff, and so you can you can reduce it back down to powers of a to the power n minus one or below. Okay, and any analytic function can be expressed as a polynomial in a. So that's basically what the Cayley-Hamilton theorem says. An analytic function, so even though an analytic function like e to the at, uh, when you take the power series, you get an infinite number of powers. Because of the fact that powers of a above n can be written in terms of powers of a up to n minus 1 power, um, we can write any analytic function as a polynomial in a up to the power n minus 1. Okay, so here's our characteristic polynomial evaluated at a. So the function of a and k, or t, depending on what uh, you're trying to solve for. So for, for now, I'm going to say a and k. Basically, the function is going to be a function of a up to the power n minus 1, and I'm going to have these functions g from g0 up to gn minus 1, um, and these two will these two th things will be equal to one another. If we can find the functions gi, then we have f evaluated at a. The functions gi are obtained by what's called interpolation. What does that mean? So basically, it means that the, as scalars, so instead of f of a, we have f of x. g of x and k is equal to f of x and k at all the values of all the eigenvalues. Okay, so th these are the interpolation conditions. Okay, so let's suppose then our function that we're wanting to compute is x to the power k, like a to the k. Then g of x and k is going to be, can be written this way, as functions g that are functions of k only, and x as a polynomial up to the power n minus 1. So that's that's what we would have. And, and basically, we can write this. This is what we are going to look for in using the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. So if we have simple roots, it's a lot easier. For repeated roots, the interpolation also includes not only the function values, but the derivatives at the repeated values. So if an eigenvalue is repeated r times, then we would take the derivatives of g being equal to the derivatives of f evaluated at the lambdas. That's what we do in the case of repeated. So we can have simple or repeated, and this handles both. When we do this, we will have n interpolation conditions associated with all the eigenvalues, including the repetitions. And so this will give n equations with n unknowns. 
and the unknown functions are gi. These equations can then be stacked into a matrix equation, and then a generalized Vandermonde matrix inverse is needed for solution. Okay, so here I've explained what's going on. It doesn't it's not that easy to understand what's going on just by my explanation. So when we look at the practice problems, hopefully it'll make a lot more sense. So in summary, on this, in this lecture, the state transition matrix for a LTI system can be computed using either Laplace transforms, Z transforms, Q transforms, can be done using eigenvector method. So that is, if you have simple eigenvalues, then, then we can diagonalize the matrix and compute the function that way. We can use the Cayley-Hamilton theorem and interpolation, and we can use the spectral mapping theorem. So we have a number of tools in our belt to be able to compute the state transition matrix. Stay tuned now for the practice problems.